Billionaire businessman Elon Musk has delivered an eagerly awaited update on a spacecraft he hopes will eventually take people to other planets, saying he's confident it will test launch this year. The Starship rocket is bigger than those that took off astronauts to the moon. It's central to Musk's plans to colonize Mars. His company, SpaceX, is still waiting for U.S. government approval for the Starship to carry out its first test flight. It's been a difficult week for SpaceX after it lost 40 freshly launched satellites to a solar storm. Let's get more on this now from Keith Cowling in Washington, D.C. He's editor of the website spaceref.com. Good to have you with us again. So, a massive rocket in the making. What's the latest on Elon Musk's ambitions? Well, he gave quite a show tonight with a rather prominent uh, backdrop, a 400-foot-tall rocket, uh, which, if it were to fly tomorrow, would be the largest thing to ever fly, the large, largest rocket ever built. Pick your supporters, Tim. And, uh, you know, a lot of people there were quite excited, but, you know, folks always want more numbers and the media always wants more details than he's willing to give. So half and half. But it's not all smooth sailing there at SpaceX, I understand. Uh, many of its satellites have been destroyed in orbit. How did that happen? Well, it, it's not uncommon for the sun to influence Earth's atmosphere and weather. It's usually predictable, but when something happens like a solar flare, you have maybe a day or so's notice, sometimes hours. And in this case, they launched the satellites, the sun threw a flare at the Earth's atmosphere, it, sw it swelled up, and the, as the, you know, the impact was that the satellites came in before they had a chance to go higher up. So it was an unfortunate coincidence predictable to some extent, but then again, it's we call it space weather and, you know, what they say about the weather. How dependent has NASA become on SpaceX for achieving its goals? Well, a few years ago, NASA went from, you know, flying the space shuttle, which was very expensive, to looking at ways to use the private sector to launch cargo to the space station and crews. And they eventually picked several companies. SpaceX was one that got both the crew and the cargo. And in the ensuing years, they've saved the agency not only a lot of money, but they've learned how to do things that NASA itself couldn't do. And they've applied that expertise to the big rocket they were talking about. So uh, in addition, the rocket that we were talking about, the big Starship, the top part, the Starship itself, is actually what they're going to use uh, for NASA's first landing of humans on the moon. So there's a lot of overlap here between what SpaceX is doing, what NASA is doing, and what the two of them are doing together. So they depend on each other. Keith, thank you so much. That was Keith Cowing there, the editor of SpaceRef.com.